Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at the stuff behind me here, all the food plot that we planted this spring. Right now it's the first week of August on the west side of Michigan. Next week, we're gonna plant our fall food plots. So I just wanted to come out here and do a little recon. Let's see how the spring planting went. All right, so it is a very, very warm, humid day today here in Michigan. I mean, it's like the dew points at around 73 or 74 degrees. That is really, really high. So I'm walking out here in the food plot where we always do all of our experiments. It's uh, kind of called the West Plot. Um, I'm not in the Sahara. We'll, we'll go look at the Sahara in a little bit. But uh, if you remember back in the first video when I planted, and then a couple weeks after I planted, I did a little experiment um, we drilled everything in and then the weeds were a little aggressive, I thought. So I, I, I mowed through a spot out in this food plot and that's kind of where I'm standing now. So if I swing this around, I don't know if you can see right back down through here, it was mowed, that side not mowed, but uh, it's probably hard to see because it, it kind of evened out. It almost looks like it kind of evened out. I shouldn't say that. There are definitely less weeds where I mowed. But how has the crop done? That's, I think, what is probably more important. So, man, there is a lot of clover out here. Holy moly. There's a lot of clover in here. And, uh, all right, but anyway, so let's look down here at some of these rows of what's going on. So the area where I mowed, I am starting to see a lot of the millet get tall. It's probably, oh gosh, it's uh, above my knee now. And so that's encouraging because one of the things I wanted to do in the food plots this year, I want more structure. I want more height in them because that will create more edge when I cut uh, the shooting lanes. There'll be edge in there. And what I found a couple years ago is they really like that edge. It just seemed like there were more deer, at least more deer visible to me because I can't see the whole food plots. And I don't know if you can see your whole food plots. Um, but I can't because uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm off of them a ways. So I have to cut shooting lanes through them. So maybe there were the same amount of deer in the food plots, but by having structure and then cutting those shooting lanes and having a height difference, they congregated more in the short stuff and along the edge so I could see them more. So um, either that or there actually were more deer in the food plots because they felt more comfortable being in there in the daylight. So let's look down. All right, so I'm looking down, I'm seeing what I think is the millet. I don't think there's any corn in the mix. So it's millet. I see a bunch of radishes. I see a bunch of clover. I see soybeans. And I see that they are eating some of this stuff. I see some vetch. And I'll say as I'm looking through here in the mode section, I kind of like it. It looks pretty good. Um, how has the moisture been this year? That's probably the question you're wondering. If it's not, you should have been wondering, right? <laughs> so moisture this year, uh, when we planted back in May, um, we had average moisture, then it got dry for probably five or six weeks. It got really, really dry. Everything germinated and it grew, but it wasn't growing vigorously. And about the last two weeks, we've probably got about three or four inches of rain. So all of a sudden, boom, we're getting moisture. And I can tell everything is jumping up now. I hope you're getting rain in your area so your food plots are doing well. But, um, you know, I look through here and I think, man, eh, it's doing pretty good. There's definitely weeds in here too, especially this uh, mare's tail. And, but I'm gonna stick with my plan A. I was kind of debating if I was gonna come out here and, and mow it and spray it and burn it all down before I planted the fall stuff. I'm not doing that. Plan A was to go this year with no fertilizer and no chemicals, just to see how it does. And uh, somebody made a comment a few videos ago, just kind of encouraging me that on that too. He said, basically, just keep planting without the weed control and eventually the weeds will get a little less and a little less and a little less. And so I'm kind of hoping that's what happens, but maybe next year I would, I would burn everything down and kind of do a fresh start with weeds. I'm not sure yet. So a lot of experimenting. So you know what we have been doing here? We've been experimenting for, this is the fourth year of experimenting with no-till, kind of changing the whole concept. And in a nutshell, 
where we are right now with all the experimenting we've done is that for this sandy soil, number one, no-till is the best. Number two, how do you plant? We figured that out too. For this sandy soil, for light soil, broadcasting doesn't work the greatest. Um, you can use a, what I call a more economical grain drill. You don't need an official no-till drill to do this. You can do it with a grain drill because the soil is never really heavy enough that you can't drill and get the seed to soil contact that you need. Now, if you have heavier soil, you're gonna have to experiment and you're probably gonna have to do an official no-till drill. It's got the coulters in front, it's got more weight to it and uh, plant that way. But I'm trying to save some money. I mean, you can get one of those um, Genesis no-till drills for 15 grand, 10 grand, 15 grand. Um, the drill I'm using, I got brand new for three grand, 3,500 bucks, something like that. So anyways, so I'm only saying that because We've decided no-till is the way to go. We decided how to plant. Now what we're trying to figure out is how to control the weeds and get the best results out of here. And that's kind of what the experiments are for the next year or two. You know, do you, a roller crimper is five grand for a roller crimper. Now, so I'm trying not to spend the money on that and trying to do some experiments to save you on that if you don't have to. I mean, that's uh, from what you see on the videos, that's the best way to do it. And that's the way the farmers do it. And Grant Woods and those guys, that's how they do it. But is that the best way to do it? I don't, I, it, maybe we can do it a different way. So, so I tried to do it without anything this year. I just put the bucket down when I planted and smashed everything with the front of the bucket. And that did okay, but it's not, it, it, I mean, there's still weeds in here. But the crop is growing in here too. So, all right. So that's what we're trying to figure out. So I am out here right now to say, that I'm pretty happy with the spring planting. There are weeds in here. And you can just see by just looking around, especially the mare's tail, look at this stuff. I mean, it's everywhere. But when you're on a horizontal plane, it looks really bad. But then when you get right up on top of it, look straight down, it's not as bad as it seems. And then that's where I say I can look down inside there. And I see soybeans. I see a ton of soybeans all over in here. I'm kind of excited about that. Um, and brassicas are all over in here. So... I'm, that's telling me I'm sticking with plan A. I'm not going to do anything about the weeds. I'm literally gonna drill right into this. I'm gonna change my attitude about mare's tail today. And I'm gonna say, I like that right now because it's tall and stiff stalks and hopefully it stands up in the winter time or at least in the fall and creates some structure out here. So that's, <laughs> that's my new attitude about mare's tail. Um, today, Mark is gonna be happy with that. But next year, Mark, he might be pissed off at today, Mark, right now because I made this decision because I might have a, a huge uh, mare's tail field instead of anything else and it chokes everything out, but I'll deal with it at that time. But that's what I'm doing today. So uh, pretty much I'd call it a minor success. Okay, now I am up in our Sahara food plots and this is the, these are the spots that are the driest. This is the most sandy, most difficult place to uh, get a good food plot going, but it's also been one of our more successful areas. We see deer up here all the time, and the bucks like to hang around up here. But if you, if I turn around and look, you can just see the mare's tail. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's just it's just like from horizontally, you sit here and look that direction. Wow, it's just all mare's tail. But what I want to do is walk into here a little bit and see if anything that we planted is actually growing in here and how well it's growing. And uh, so as I'm sitting here looking in there, it's, there's definitely space between all that. I think it looks worse than it is when you look horizontally, but when you get on top and look straight down in there, there's a lot of gaps in there. And just standing right here without going in there because I got terrible allergies, <clears throat> I'm seeing buckwheat. Uh, I see some radish. I see soybeans. Soybeans, they're a little on the yellow yellow side. Is that right? Light green. Um, so again, I'm going to stick with plan A in these plots. And I'm doing that because I want to see how it goes. I just want to see how it goes. Now, it's not, it's not as good in this plot as it was back there in the west plot by the west blind. It's just, it's just not. It's not as good. It's not as vigorous. But again, it's been drier up here. And all this mare's tail that's getting ready to bloom here, this is um, shading everything underneath there. So not the best situation, but I'm gonna just be stubborn and let it go and see what happens. 
And now I'm over in our, check this hawk out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it right here. <laughs> that was pretty cool, right? What timing. So now I'm out in our snake plot. I think he's mad I'm out here. I'm out in his hunting area. He was thinking that he was gonna grab a rabbit out of here, but I scared him all away, so he's pissed off at me. Okay, out in the snake plot and um, making a, a little bit of an observation here. I guess I think, um, I mean, there's still, this was all planted. Everything is exactly the same as everywhere on the whole property. It's all planted at the same time. I'm looking down in here and I am seeing maybe a little bit better spring. The stuff we plant in the spring is coming up better. It's a little more vigorous. And it seems, I don't know if you can just see, if I just look out here, like there's few, there's not as much mare's tail out here. And there was another spot like that, kind of in that west plot, that first one that I was in, uh, that was the same way. And so one of the things I think I just noticed is that this actually has some residual clover in it. And I'm not talking about annual clovers that I drilled in in the spring. This is stuff that's been here for probably eight or 10 years, back when I used to plant uh, clover in the plots and um it's still coming up in here like white clover kind of thing and so this area has still has a pretty good population of that clover in here and what i'm noticing is there's not as much weeds especially the mare's tail in here so you're not getting the height of the mare's tail that shading the stuff underneath it i mean there's still weeds down in here don't get me wrong but i'm almost wondering if the clover is helping to keep the weed population down but the stuff we drilled in the spring is still coming up through the clover. So I'm almost wondering if you had just a base level of clover in all of the plots, you would always have something that the deer like for most of the year. And then it would almost act like a ground cover to help, to help keep the weeds down while you still drill in the stuff that you would drill in even if the clover wasn't there. Huh. I'm kind of thinking now. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Let's let's kind of let's think about that. I wonder I wonder if I might put clover in the drill next week like white clover in the front small seed bin part of the drill and drill that in now and then it'll come up a little bit in the fall but mostly next spring it should really take off and get established pretty well. Huh. I think about that. I'm not sure. So anyway, so this has kind of been our, our food plot roundup. Uh, I guess we've looked at the three of them. I've kind of had a chance to look at it. Stuff is coming up okay. There's still a lot of weeds in there, but there are things growing in there and feeding the soil. And that's what we're doing in the spring and summer is feeding the soil, trying to get that organic matter going, get all the bugs going, get some worms out here. Uh, I took a spade and I did hit a few spots and I don't have worms out here yet. So I want worms. <laughs> so, but yeah, maybe maybe next year we'll have worms. Um, that will be five years without worm. Man, isn't that a long time? But once the worm population gets in here, can you imagine how much faster the soil is gonna improve with that going on and them turning the soil over and putting the channels in there? And oh my gosh, it'll be great. So we'll get there, we'll, we'll get there. But uh, so I am gonna get ready to drill the stuff in for fall, I'll probably throw another video out once I do that and kind of keep up on the germination and kind of see what's going on there. So I uh, appreciate you watching. If you got any questions, just throw them in the comments below. I'll try and answer everything that I can before I head off to work in the morning. Thanks. Have a great day.